just a few more people can escape and Allah Ta'ala A'lam how many people's lives were saved because of this heroic feat and he was also then gunned down and died shaheed now I want us to think about those 50 people that were killed anyone who had witnessed it witnessed hell on earth anyone who had saw the video that was pasted, posted on Facebook had witnessed something deeply traumatic. But wallahi, wallahi, my dear brothers and sisters, those that died were not terrorized. We know from our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, those who die, because they say Allah is our Lord, that at the first strike, they see the paradise. They see unimaginable joy. They see unimaginable pleasure that's awaiting them. They were not terrorized. He sought to terrorize them for their faith, but instead Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the images of what was in store for them later. And wallahi, we know this from our faith, that they saw Jannah. That place was not hell on earth. It was a paradise. I want us to reflect on the story of the families because the families did not see the paradise. The families did not see and witness what they were witnessing. They are now forced to live in this world without their loved ones and with the traumatic memories of what they witnessed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send His rahmah and His tranquility and His upon them. Ameen. But subhanallah, when you see these families and you see them online and you see them in the interviews, you witness a sign of Allah. You witness Sakina being sent down upon them. Anyone who has seen those, including the interviewers themselves, witness and recognize and testify to the calmness, to the serenity, to the peace in the heart of those families. To the point that subhanAllah, I want to highlight one interview that I saw from a lady called Amreen. And she was the wife of Naeem, the man I mentioned that had sacrificed himself to save other people. When she was interviewed just days after, her husband and her son passed away, her son of 21 years. What was her state? Smiling. Wallahi, she was smiling. The interviewer was crying. She was smiling, remembering how great her husband was, how great her child was. She was smiling as she said how she knew where they were in the next life. She was smiling at the heroic deed that her husband did. To the point that the interviewer was shocked and asked her, how do you have such strength? Where is this coming from? It must be something other than your faith. What's happening? And she said, no, it is only my faith. That is the message of La ilaha illallah. That is faith in Iman manifest. That is a demonstration of what it means to be a believer. And that is a demonstration and a sign that Allah has sent down Sakina to those families. Subhanallah, such a powerful, powerful demonstration that we need to learn from, that we need to internalize. Another interviewer, Subhanallah, the husband with the disability in the wheelchair that I mentioned, whose wife had died going back to save him, he was interviewed. And Subhanallah, just days after, Wallahi, I'm, more, I'm guilty of this, that after hearing about this, the anger that we feel, towards this ideology, towards the person that did this, the anger that we feel, that we feel cannot be quelled. Despite that, he said, I have forgiven the person that did this to my wife. Subhanallah. From his iman and belief in al ghafur al-Rahim, in the most merciful and in the most forgiving, from inspiration of the verse in the Quran, Forgive, pardon, turn the page. Don't you wish for Allah to forgive you?
Such powerful demonstrations of faith that we can learn from. And so they were the real victors. They were the real victors. And it is up to us to take these stories and bring them into our hearts so that they did not die in vain, but that their death meant something. And their death would be a light that would reflect into our hearts, that would enable us the strength to come over the grief and the mourning, that will enable us the strength to overcome the challenges of life, that will enable us to reconnect with this message of La ilaha illallah, seeing with our own eyes the power of La ilaha illallah and what it can achieve in such a difficult time. I want us to reflect on the love and support that we have witnessed from those in Australia, from those in Brisbane, from those in New Zealand, from those along, all across the world, from political leaders such as the Prime Minister of New Zealand, Jacinda, who subhanAllah demonstrated such love to the Muslim community, who went there and embraced the families, whose eyes swelled with tears for all those that had lost. To our own Prime Minister here in Australia, Scott Morrison, who had given powerful and strong words of support for the Muslims. To leaders all across the world who had shown their solidarity and support. And then to the local community. SubhanAllah, the mountains of flowers that had arrived at the footsteps and the doorsteps of Masajid across Brisbane, across the world. SubhanAllah, here in Karabi. The amount of flowers that we've received, good wishes and well wishes that we've received, non-Muslim and people who are not Muslim who have come here on this day of Friday to show their support and solidarity. This is what I meant that love overcame hatred. He wished to divide, he wished to terrorize so that people would not support Muslims living here in these lands, practicing the Islamic faith. But the complete opposite occurred. People showed their unity and solidarity with the Muslim community. People showed that Islam and Muslims are welcome here. It's so ironic that the symbols of Islam, that these people, and I say people in the, in the plural, because this is not just one individual. Let's not say that this is just some psychopath, someone who is deranged, mentally ill. No, from his manifesto we see, this is a person motivated by an ideology that has infected many people and politicians and people across the globe. And ironically, these people who hate the symbols of Islam in these lands of freedom and democracy, who hate to see Masajid being built, who do everything they can to protest any mosque being built anywhere, just here in Australia, how difficult it is for the Muslim community to set up a mosque just an hour from here in Maluluba in the Sunshine Coast, how difficult it was for them to open up a masjid to the point that they had protested and said only the mosque can be open for three hours because we don't want the call to prayer to disturb people. We don't want the call to prayer to come out and challenge our way of life. And the Muslim community had to plead, had to beg that the mosque should be open just so that people could pray five times a day. Subhanallah. But how ironic that these people who seek to push the symbols of Islam down have only elevated them in this time. In this week, how many adhan and call to prayers have been publicly, for the first time, been called on a national level. In New Zealand, in Australia, people are proudly, people who are not even Muslim, are playing the call to prayer as a show of solidarity. This is the strength of the love and support that we've seen. And we must as Muslims be grateful be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for enabling us to experience this and live in a place where when something like this happens, it doesn't snowball, but rather the people gather around and make sure that we are safe and make sure to show that we are cared for and in full support. And we're grateful, of course, to those people and individuals and communities who have shown their support. And for those who have come here, who are not Muslim, but have come here just for the, just for the fact of showing us solidarity, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We thank you and we extend our gratitude towards you. And our doors are always open to you. 
أقول قول هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. بسم الله اللهم اغفر لي اللهم اغفر لي اللهم اغفر للمسلمين. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد. I want to address the comments that were made the day of the attack and massacre in New Zealand by a senator here in Queensland. And now is not the time to go into the politics and the anti-immigration and the white supremacy and whatnot. But I want to highlight one thing that this ignorant fool mentioned that needs to be addressed. That he said that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was a religious despot, that he loved violence, that called for a religion that's full of hate and violence to others. This ignorance must be educated. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, if this man and people like him were to just open their eyes to read any biography of the Prophet sallallahu and I know for a fact none of them have opened up a single book about the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, because if they did, they would see a man, how great a man he is, they would see a man who lived life so much full of trauma and difficulty and hardship, an orphan growing up without a father, Growing up after six years old without a mother. Growing up after ten without his grandfather. The strength of this man from a young age. And when he received this message and sought to preach in a peaceful manner, just simply dialoguing and speaking, he was met with persecution and torture for 13 years. And not a single hand did he raise upon anyone else. How he bared that upon himself and upon those who were following him as he walked the streets, seeing Bilal being dragged on the scorching heat, the hot rock being placed on him, and he's proclaiming, Ahadun Ahad. You can imagine the grief of the Prophet that these people are being tortured because they believe in me. Seeing Khabab ibn Arad subhanallah, this man that was tortured so much, but at the end of his life, there were holes on his back from the torture. That when he went to Ta'if and he was stoned by the children, by the vagabonds, by the men, hurled insults towards him to the point that he said that was the most traumatic day of his life, that he even had this amnesia. He said he didn't know where he was until about five kilometers away from Ta'if. About an hour to two hours had just been blocked from his memory because of that trauma. His sandals swelled with blood. He did nothing. He said nothing. And then, when finally the Muslims had the upper hand, he returns to Mecca. And those same people, what did he say to them? La tathriba alaykum al yom. I have forgiven all of you for all that you have done. How can an ignorant man, or how can a man say that except out of ignorance, calling him someone that's violent, when he didn't even raise a hand up until that point. And any of the wars that he participated in were defensive. And only they and anyone could imagine that when an army is coming to come and attack you, what are you going to respond with except survival? Such misconception is not coming really from ignorance. It's a willful ignorance. It's a hatred. It's a wanting and a demonization of the other. The Prophet ﷺ described in the Quran as Rahmatan lil alameen. One attribute to describe him is Rahmah, loving compassion. How he treated everyone, no matter what they, where they came from or their faith. We know the story of that lady who had a large burden to carry, who was not a Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ helped this lady. And the whole way he was helping her, she was insulting the Prophet ﷺ, not knowing that that was the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, backbiting and slandering how bad this person is, how he's doing X, Y, Z. And the Prophet ﷺ said nothing. He helped her. Until she asked him, what's your name? You've been so kind, you've been so helpful. And he said, my name is Muhammad. And she 
took her shahada. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The same Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that when his neighbor was throwing garbage and hurling insults every time he would leave the house, that one day there was no garbage, there were no insults. And he realized that she had become sick. He went and visited her out of concern for her well-being. This is the Prophet ﷺ, a Prophet of mercy, a Prophet of forgiveness. And anyone who says otherwise is completely and utterly ignorant. The same Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, so gentle and kind, that a lady, a small lady, and he's the leader of the Muslim Ummah, a lady who had a slight mental illness, who has had an intellectual disability, took him by the hand, and was dragging her along and the Prophet ﷺ went with her wherever she wished until she let go of the Prophet ﷺ. How great a man the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ is. And subhanAllah, how ironic that these people wish to suppress and wish to malign Muslims. But today, just today, in the mass funeral, during the mass funeral in New Zealand, there was a Kiwi man who actually took his shahada and embraced Islam. Allahu Akbar. So as I said from the beginning, this is truly a story of victory, not of defeat. A story of love, not of hate. A story of, of heroism and not tyranny. But of course, there requires action from us. And I want to conclude with a bit of an action plan from us. The fact of the matter is, yes, love has definitely outweighed the hate, but the hate still exists. And these things will continue to occur unless we take action. And one of the important things to take action on is any speech, behavior, discrimination toward any minority group, be they Muslim, be they any other minority group, because this white nationalism and supremacy, as we've seen, does not target just Muslims, but targets almost every minority group. And we've seen it throughout the centuries. We've seen it towards the Jews and the Holocaust. We've seen it towards the African Americans during slavery and during the, the civil rights period. We've seen it towards the Japanese in America. We've seen it now towards Muslims. This anti-immigration rhetoric that is accepted in the political landscape can no longer be accepted. And anytime we see it online, in person, we must report it. We cannot be silent. We cannot say, let it go. It's okay. We must speak up against it. So that's point number one. Number two, we need to be strong in our Muslim identity. We need to go out there and be strong in our Muslim identity and make everyone realize that this land, this free land of democracy, is a multicultural land. And that is a strength, not a weakness, despite what they say. That there is a beauty in the diversity that we see here, and the different cultures that we see, the different languages, the different cuisines, the different dresses. It makes life vibrant. There is so much positivity that comes out of it. There's so much that we learn from one another. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, that He has made us into shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu. Made us into different cultures and nations and tribes so that we may know one another. Number three, we must educate ourselves about Islam and continue to inform others about what Islam really calls for. This ignorance from the level of from the level of uh, the politicians trickles down into a person who doesn't know any better, who hasn't been exposed to a Muslim, who hasn't met a Muslim. We must make it our mission to make sure within our circles, within our capacity, that we show and demonstrate through our character and action what it means to be a Muslim and through our speech, quality misconceptions, explain what our religion teaches condemn any sort of terrorism and disassociate Islam from those ideas. This is very essential for us as we move forward, opening up our homes, opening up our mosques, so that we can create bonds and build bridges between communities. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to have the iman and strength to continue with our faith despite the difficult times. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless those martyrs and accept them as shuhada. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
show them Jannatul Naim in their grave. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them for anything they may have done in this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send his sakina and his rahma upon the families that are grieving. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send strength and comfort to them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of those who have, so, who have showed support to the Muslim community. May Allah bless them in their lives. May Allah shower his rahmah and mercy and compassion upon them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us our striving, our concern, our grieving. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our iman, increase our yaqeen, increase our action. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us a means to become a beacon of hope in this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us means for light in the darkness. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma aghfir lil muslimin wal muslimat wal mu'minin wal mu'minat al ahya'u minhum wal amwat bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma ansur al muslimin fi kulli makan Allahumma ansurhum wa arhamhum wa afu anhum ya rabbal alamin inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma sallim wa barik wa anna'ma ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa aqimu salah